All right, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to another uh, online workshop run through the training team on Learn Online Workshops. And my name is Nick Diego. I am a sponsor contributor by Automatic, and I'm joined with my co-host here, Justin Tadlock, uh, another sponsored uh, contributor by Automatic. He's going to be helping me kind of manage the chat today. So if there are any questions uh, that you have throughout the presentation, please add them in the chat. And I'm going to probably stop at a few points during the presentation to kind of get some questions and, and then we'll proceed. So today we are talking about WordPress 6.3 and particularly reusable blocks. So the, the title of this presentation was hopefully a little catchy. Um, I see that we have uh, currently 66 people here. Just so you're aware, this is the second most RSVP'd online workshop. So thank you very much for all attending. But I'm assuming that that means that all of you are very interested in reusable blocks. Either you use them currently um, or you have heard of them and are interested in seeing what's changing. So there's a lot of great improvements coming in WordPress 6.3, but one of the biggest things, at least biggest changes, is the renaming of reusable blocks to synced patterns. And we're gonna get into all that. I'm gonna show you how they work, but the, the, the main point that I want to make just from the get-go is that if you're currently using reusable blocks, everything will still work. This is primarily a name change as well as some additional enhancements. So if you're using reusable blocks, everything's okay. You can continue using them. The functionality is going to be the same. If anything, you're just going to get more functionality and um, I think you're just going to have to get used to synced patterns, but I'll explain why that change happened and why it's actually a good thing uh, as we move forward. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen and we're going to go through a little bit of a demo and I'm going to explain all the changes uh, that relate to patterns in WordPress 6.3. We also might see some additional stuff that's coming in 6.3, um, but I'll explain that as we get there. All right, start sharing my screen. Okay, so you should be seeing the meetup page right now. This is the event that we're all attending. If you did not, if you're on the Zoom and we're not attending this event, I apologize. I hope you're now interested in learning about reusable blocks. And what I like to do with every demo is I like to explain kind of my WordPress setup. If you have been to one of my online workshops before, usually I just use stock 2023. Um, I'm not doing that today. I'm using a custom theme that's built off of 2023 just to provide a bit more of a pseudo realistic environment. So I have a fake website here for WordPress University. You know, it's fairly built out. But again, this is just built right on top of 2023. Nothing too fancy, just change of colors, addition of some designs. The big key here is if you're wanting to follow along at home, we are using the latest version of Gutenberg active. And I'm also using the 6.3 beta 4 nightly. So before we get too far, I want to talk quickly about 6.3. So WordPress 6.3 is coming out on August 8th. And um, where's my chat go? I'm going to drop in the link. So the link that I just put in the chat, this is how you can test out uh, the beta 4 which came out last week, RC1, which is the first release candidate for WordPress 6.3 is gonna come out tomorrow. It's a little unfortunate that I planned this for today and not tomorrow because there are gonna be some subtle changes and improvements that are in the release candidate that I would love to show you here, but it, it, it's not gonna detract too much. But we have the first RC tomorrow, and then we have subsequent RCs each week, and then we'll have the release on August 8th. But if you want to test out 6.3s, test out some of the stuff that you see here in this presentation, uh, you're going to want to install the latest version of Gutenberg and then follow the link to uh, that post, and it will explain how you can set up your environment to test uh, 6.3 beta 4. So those are the only two plugins. I do have the icon block. This is just a block to add icons. It just makes the patterns that we're gonna be experimenting with in a little bit, a little bit nicer, not a requirement whatsoever. So let's hop right into a, just a normal page and go to where you traditionally would have found 
the user interface to create a reusable block. So let's just come in here to my a test page that I set up. So here we are just in the normal post editor. And if I wanted to turn blocks into a reusable block, and maybe some of us don't, some of the people in here don't know what a reusable block is. So a reusable block is a block. Yeah, let's actually just pretend that we're going to create one. So here I have a row. If I wanted to take this row and the content inside of it and turn it into a reusable block, what it would do is it would save all the block markup. And then I could use, and I'd give it a name. We could call it notice or something like that. And then I could, it would save the notice. And then we could use that notice reusable block anywhere else on our site. When we did that, and I changed this notice, wherever that reusable block was placed on the site, they'd all get updated. So in a sense, you can think of that they're all synced together. Whenever a change was made to one reusable block, any other instances of that reusable block would also get updated. As the title of this presentation alludes to, reusable blocks are being renamed to synced patterns. So you can kind of see where that synced name is coming from. It's because in the prior naming convention, every reusable block that was the same instance, they were all synced together. Change was made in one, it would, it would change in all the others. So if I wanted to create a usable, reusable block, I would go to my row, I click on the three little dot icon options, and there'd be an uh, uh, um, a option here to create reusable block. You can see now that it says create pattern slash reusable block. This is a temporary thing. So for folks who maybe are not attending this session or are not necessarily paying really close attention to the release notes for 6.3, they might be confused. They might go to add a reusable block and then see create pattern and not know, know, not know what happened. But now temporarily, it's gonna say create pattern slash reusable block. But this is the exact same menu item that you would have seen before, just with a different name. Now before, when you would click this, it would create the reusable block and you could rename it. Now, when we click it, you're gonna get this modal. And this modal, let's see if we can zoom a little bit here. It says create pattern. And it gives us this little prompt that says reusable blocks are now called patterns. A sync pattern will behave exactly the same way as a reusable block. And we can name the pattern or reusable block. And we can toggle whether it's synced or not. We're gonna talk about unsynced patterns in a second. I just wanna really laser focus on reusable blocks. But in this case, what I would do is I would say, give my thing and give my pattern a name. I'm just gonna do this, call it sync, just for my own edification. We're gonna click synced and we're gonna click create. And now you can see, and this should look very similar to anybody that's used a reusable block. We get the little triangles, we get the title, we can change the title of our reusable block here. And now if I'm going to, if I was to duplicate this, when we go to our list view, I see that I have two reusable blocks or synced patterns. And when I change one of them, you can see that both of them change, i.e. they are synced. So okay, <laughs> final, final point of hammering this home. A reusable block is now called a synced pattern. And because in many ways, that's what a reusable block was doing. It was syncing content between each instance of the reusable block. Okay, so why are we calling them patterns to begin with? You might be asking yourself. Because we also have patterns. So if you click on this inserter, you, we have the patterns that you can pick from. You know, these, there are some that come with uh, the theme. There are some that come, are provided by WordPress. You could, you know, there, we'll see some in a minute, but we'll, some themes have hundreds of theme, or some hundreds of patterns. Why are we conflating reusable blocks with patterns? Well, if you think about it, a reusable block is the same thing as a pattern. It's just a design, a collection of blocks but it has a unique property in that the content is synced between each one. So the idea is, is that we're going to standardize naming conventions around one thing, and that's a pattern. A pattern can have a handful of different states. It can be synced, 
and it can be unsynced. That's what's coming in WordPress 6.3. However, one of the things that a lot of the community has asked for is this idea of a partially synced pattern. So imagine a scenario coming back to our notice here. Imagine that I wanted the design to not change. I wanted this icon to be the same. I wanted the green to be the same, but I wanted to allow people to change the text, right? Because notices have different text you know, throughout your site, right? And so the idea behind a partially sync pattern is that it would be similar to a, uh, a sync pattern or reusable block where the design would be consistent across all of the partially sync patterns, but the content could be updated by the user. This is not coming in 6.3, but hopefully it will be coming in 6.4. And what I want to do is I want to share a discussion post that if you want to learn more about the progress that's going on there. So this is actually, let's see here. Here's the link for that. So partially sync patterns are coming. And this is part of the reason why we have this unification of terminology. Because if you had a reusable block, a normal pattern and a partially synced pattern, it gets very confusing. So we're kind of going through this transitionary period where we're standing out, standardizing everything around the term pattern. And we know that right now there's a synced pattern and an unsynced pattern, and then eventually we'll have partially synced patterns. So what's an unsynced pattern? Well, an unsynced pattern is just a pattern, just a pattern as we've been using all this time. So if you come over here, all the patterns that are included with 2023, you know, in, you know, I'm sure many of us have interacted with patterns before. All the patterns that you see here, these are what we call unsynced patterns. An unsynced pattern, you, you insert it and it's just the blocks. There's no connection to the pattern itself, other patterns that, that were inserted with the same name. It's just a normal block pattern. So we're 15 minutes in and basically we can end the presentation. That's what's changing. We have reusable blocks are the same. The name is changing. We have this little modal that allows us to, let's do this one here, that allows us to name it and choose between synced and unsynced. And that's it. From a technical perspective, that's pretty much it. However, from a user interface and a pattern management set, uh, perspective, we have a lot to still have a lot to cover. Because what I did prior, previously, was I created a, basically, I followed the same workflow to create a reusable block. In WordPress, prior to 6.3, there was no way to save a normal unsynced block pattern. You had to create your design. You know, traditionally, you you know, for example, if we wanted to, I'm going to undo this. If we wanted to save this notice as a pattern and then make it insertable, you know, through one of these categories, I would have had to come over here to the code editor. I would have had to copy the code into a pattern file, put it in my theme. You know, that's the standard workflow of creating patterns. Now there are other solutions out there. There's some plugins out there that allow you to save patterns, but you couldn't do any of that in core. So one of the amazing things, you know, whether you use reusable blocks or not, is just the fact that you can now create and save patterns directly in WordPress core. So let's take this example of this notice. And we're going to say, do the same option we did for creating a sync pattern. We're going to not click synced. And we're going to say, notice defaults. Actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do default. Actually, let's do, let's do uh, tip. No, actually default, sorry. I forgot what I wanted to name it. OK, so we have notice default. We've unchecked synced. And we're going to click create. And it says unsynced pattern created. Okay. Let's come up to this one and we'll do the same thing. And we'll call this one tip. Unsynced. We don't want it to be synced because people need to be able to change their content. Okay. Another one has been created. Now, when I come over here to the inserter and go to patterns, I see that there's this option over here for my patterns. Come over here and you can see that I have my notice 
for default and my notice for tip. So these patterns, these block patterns are actually being saved in WordPress and they can immediately be inserted under my patterns. Now at this point, there's no way for you to save one of your patterns to a specific category as of 6.3. Any pattern that you create is going to be saved to my patterns. Now, I kind of skipped over this, but where did the reusable block that we saved earlier, the, the synced notice that we saved earlier, where does that end up? Well, there's this a little double triangle uh, or diamond, sorry, not triangle, uh, diamond icon. And this was the same icon used for reusable blocks. So that has not changed. It just now is called synced patterns. If I come over here, you can see that that notice synced is over underneath synced patterns. So anything that you save within the editor is now directly insertable from the insert. Reusable blocks didn't change. It just the title changed. Um, they're still here. But now we can save our own block patterns under my patterns, which is pretty cool. Um, but it goes further than that because you say, okay, well, they're saved. How do I manage them? Well, for those familiar with reusable blocks, there was, you could modify and delete reusable blocks and they were kind of hidden in the, in the admin. Um, you had to find them. It's kind of like a hidden admin page that you could get to. There's no, there's no direct link to it. And then you could delete and manage your reusable blocks there. Well, a lot of improvement has been added to the site editor, which we're going to see in a second, that allows you to, to manage these patterns in a more visual and effective way. So at this point, I want to stop uh, and see up until this point, does anybody have any questions that we can answer? Yeah, we actually quite a few in the chat. Uh, 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 and I do want to apologize uh, to everybody for our uninvited <laughs> guests we had uh, a couple of them uh, uh messing up our chat there for a bit um do you want me to i, I can go ahead and uh, back through some of these uh nick um we got i've answered a couple of them um yeah i mean i i apologize folks i had not i obviously not been looking at the chat so i figured with such a large event we might get some might get some folks trying to have fun but yeah yeah we had a couple of them um sorry um uh I'm I'm just scrolling back through from all the deleted messages now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, so uh, the the first question we had was uh are the patterns in that section a part of the theme or all patterns in the WordPress directory somewhere? Um that um uh, I wasn't sure what part of the video you were in at that point either. Um yeah, I mean, th that's a great question. So anything that we are, that what you just saw is going to be saved to the database and is going to be, um, it, it does not affect your theme whatsoever. So it, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the create block packet uh, plugin. Um, this is not available right now, but you could imagine a scenario where you could use the create block package to export your patterns, just like you can with templates. So like if you make your changes in the site editor to templates and template parts and global styles and whatnot, you can use the create block package to take those changes that are in the database and write them to your theme. Um, there is no current functionality for patterns, um, but it's not a huge leap to imagine that being possible. But right now in 6.3, without any other plugin, the patterns will be saved to your to the database of the theme. And if you wanted to then take them and put them into a theme, then you, you kind of need to follow the same process. You need to you know open up the pattern. And I'll show you the individual pattern management we'll see in a second. You need to copy the code, put it into a pattern file, and then go from there. Uh, right now, it's just all everything's saved in the database. Yeah. I think that one. <laughs> reply I like, answered like half the questions in here <laughs> okay. um, yeah it's like yeah where is it being saved uh how do you ship it with the theme um yeah big questions and you cover them both um uh, all right uh, and I do want to stress that you know 6.3 is the very first implementation of pattern management um so for example if Think about all the things that you do with patterns. You know, you, if think about a pattern file, it has a header and it has, do you want it to be insertable? Do you want to have categories? Do you want to have keywords? You, 
all that stuff is not currently available in this pattern management uh, setup, right? It's just very simple, create and save your patterns, uh, change the name, that sort of thing. Uh, you can duplicate, we'll see this in a second, we're jumping ahead a little bit, you can duplicate patterns, uh, that sort of thing. But all that more advanced functionality, I don't know, but I would imagine that would that would come eventually. Right now in 6.3, it's just kind of get the general architecture of creating and saving patterns in here, uh, standardize the naming conventions around patterns. And then as we move, especially when we get to partially sync patterns, hopefully in 6.4, we'll see a lot more of the advanced stuff that we might normally be able to access in the pattern file itself. Yeah, I just uh, in case uh, I missed it earlier, uh, they uh, there is a question about uh, where exactly the patterns are saved, and I just want to quickly say it's a the WP underscore block, um, yep. a custom post type. Um, All right, so why don't we hop over to the site editor and we can actually see that um, how that works. So let's. Okay, so this is actually, before we go, this is actually uh, important. So you can see that once I created that reusable block or synced pattern, uh, I made a change to it. I added this as a test. Uh, you'll, and this is the same as reusable blocks were in the past. But you can see that when I go to save the page, it's saving mul multiple entities. We have the page itself, the pattern test page, but we also are saving the notice synced, synced pattern. Um, because we made a change to it. Okay, so let's go over to the site editor. So again, appearance editor. Now this is gonna look for those who have just used 6.2, perhaps aren't using Gutenberg. Um, this is gonna look fairly different uh, in 6.3. In 6.2, we just had an option for templates, uh, template parts and navigation, I believe. And you'll notice that template parts are gone. There's no more template parts. Now, I've already accessed the site editor, but if I was accessing it for the first time, there's a little notice here that explains that where template parts went. Um, but we have styles and all sorts of stuff in here. We're going to focus on the patterns. Folder, I don't, I don't know exactly what we're calling it. Folder, area, the section here. This is where you're gonna find template parts, the patterns that you created, the ones that we said, my patterns, reusable blocks, now called synced patterns. And we're also gonna see all the patterns that are provided by the theme. So let's come in here. And we can see that under my patterns, I have, let me see my chat's note here. Under my patterns, I have synced and standard. So I have the two notices that I created, and then I have the synced one that we created together. And this is one that I think I created before this presentation to make sure everything was working. And actually in RC1, which is coming out tomorrow, there's a bit of an improvement to this screen where there's this little toggle at the top that allows you to toggle between all synced or unsynced. Because you can imagine if you're managing your site and you've been using it for a long time, you might have a lot of patterns. You know, if you're, you're it's your own site, you're managing workflows. Oh, I, I want to say this is a pattern. Oh, I want to say this is a sync pattern. You might end up with a lot. So this screen again is a kind of a first iteration, and we'll start to see some improvements here. Imagine, you know, imagine categories, imagine filtering, so on and so forth. But right now, this is the first implementation. You'll find it under my patterns. We also have our template parts. Again, these are what you'd seen, what you've seen before uh, in 6.2. And then we also have our theme patterns. So you can see here that we have uh, just a few, and these are separated into their categories. Now, the key piece here is that you cannot modify theme patterns. Uh, you can just view them here because right now this system is not writing to the theme. It's not doing really anything. It's really just for you to view the patterns that are available in the theme. So here we can see that this theme, again, because it's a clone of 2023, it has the 2023 pattern and then it has a custom one. And then we have one for posts and footers. Now, the important thing to note here is that if you have a pattern in your theme that doesn't have a category or is set to insert or no, then 
as of today, uh, they do not show up in this interface. By the time we get to 6.3, the actual official release, the, there will be like an uncategorized section for patterns, which is very similar to what you would see in the ed, in, uh, normal post editor. But any pattern that you set to insert or no would be hidden from the screen as well. Insert or no is kind of like a, a default standard if you want to have an internal pattern that maybe powers a, a, a template or a template part that you don't want people to access or insert. Um, so that standard uh, convention will stay the same, but this is where you can see all of the different patterns. Now, I, before we go any further, I'm gonna switch to uh, the Frost theme real quick because I know it has a ton of patterns and it just makes the point a little bit better that you can see all the different patterns. So here you can see all the different patterns that are available in the Frost theme. Again, it's a free theme available in the WordPress uh, theme repository. And see so here you can see all the different patterns. And this is a pretty, you can't do much with them, right? You can't change them. You can't delete them. You know, maybe in the future, there'll be more functionality, but it is a great way to see what's available, you know, to see what the theme is providing in a nice clean area. Um, so it's really just for viewing when it comes to the, the theme patterns for right now. Let's go back over to my theme. All right. So now let's go back over to patterns. And at the bottom here, you can see that there's an option to manage my patterns. Also, before we do that, we on my patterns, we can these little three little dots here. It's a little hard to see. But if you click on these three little dots, you can open up the actions menu and you can see that we can delete them. Now I'm gonna double check something real quick. Do I have Gutenberg Act? Ooh, okay. Okay, so unfortunately this presentation, RC1 comes out tomorrow and Gutenberg, uh, the release candidate for 16.3 comes out on Wednesday. <laughs> so there are some subtle tweaks to the UI that are gonna be coming out uh, in these next releases that we're not seeing here today. Uh, so one of the things that we are not seeing here today is the ability to duplicate a pattern. Uh, so that right now you can just delete them, but you will be able to duplicate them and that sort of thing. But let's come over here to manage my patterns. And this is gonna give us, a. it's going to give us a not a great screen, but it is what it is. So this is the uh, screen you would have gone to uh, before if you wanted to manage your reusable blocks. It's just a, a normal, uh, admin screen for managing post types, which we've seen probably a million times, and it's hidden. There's no direct access to it uh, at the top level. In the future, of course, there will be a better management page for patterns. Um, but in the interest of getting this functionality out in 6.3, we just have our normal page here. However, it's fully functional. So even though this base screen doesn't look that compelling, it just looks like what we've always seen, it's fully functional. So if I wanted to come in here, for example, and I wanted to edit my notice tip, I can come in here and I can, you know, we're in the editor, I can save my changes, everything like you normally would. And those of you that have used reusable blocks and edited reusable blocks, same exact interface. Now, one of the things that is a little different here is when I go to create new, okay, I'm actually very curious. So I think I must've been running the latest version of Gutenberg. So what should happen here? And I, I'm curious why this is not happening. Yeah, let me do something real quick. All right. So I wanna make sure I'm giving the, the best experience here. So what I'm doing now is I'm spinning up my site that has the absolute latest version of Gutenberg and we're just gonna test something. Okay. This looks a lot less pretty than what we were looking at here before. But first of all, you can see that this is a little notice that lets people know that template parts are now put under the patterns. 
Now we have the three little dots here that allow people to duplicate, rename, and delete. And now if we go to manage my patterns, let's add a new one. Okay, I must've been looking at like a, a branch. So what should happen here is when you go to add a new one, you can choose whether you want it to be synced or unsynced. Um, I may have been testing a FPR earlier and that's why it was in my head. So what should happen and you're in this patterns interface, when you go to create a new pattern, you'll have the little modal, the one that we saw in the editor. So if we come back over here, you'll get the same little modal. The one that asked, would you like it to be synced or unsynced? You'll get that in here. When you go to create a new one, it'll pop up. You can choose synced or unsynced and then save it. And then you can, then the sync status will update. So you, so within that, uh, that page, the admin page, you'll be able to do everything you could normally do in the post editor, but from that screen. All right, sorry for the getting things a little mixed up there. There's a lot of a lot of things come together at the last minute when we have a, a major WordPress release. And the biggest areas that are being focused on right now is getting the pattern interface uh, fully ready and all the little uh, quirks worked out. Um, so I apologize about that. So unfortunately, there is no kind of like when you, for example, when you go to manage template parts, we have the screen and this should look very similar to what we've seen before in 6.2. Ideally, hopefully in the future, we'll have something that looks like this for patterns. Um, right now, we're just going to be using that, um, the screen we saw before. All right, let's see if there's any questions at this point. We actually had just uh, the the best question, I think, uh, as far as uh, like this topic is concerned is, is a template part now just a type of sync pattern? And thank you for that question, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's asking the hard questions here. Um. You're kind of looking into the future. I think that, you know, what's the difference between a template part and a reusable block and a pattern? I mean, they're just all collections of blocks, right? With different states and different, some different treatment window dressings on each of them. And so from a, one of the things that we hear all the time when we're doing workshops or talking to the community is people getting very, especially new folks, like, getting very confused about all this terminology. We have a pattern, we have a template part, we have a reusable block. And if we can get to a point where all of that standard, it's just a pattern, it's a pattern of blocks, but it has different states or, you know, you can choose if it's synced, if it's non-synced, um, that sort of thing. That's kind of the direction that uh, the project is going. Um, it should allow for a much more unified, standardized uh, approach to building with block themes. I actually want to share um, a article, not an article, a, a PR that was talking about this. And this is a bit old. This is an older PR, um, but it's called the Grand Unification. And it talks about trying to unify concepts in WordPress. I mean, in the past, when we were all writing, building themes in PHP and you know, template files and whatnot, templates and template parse were things that the end user never interacted with. They were just part of the theme. And now because they're, people are interacting with them more and they're you know, full site editing and everything like that, the concepts start becoming like very tricky. And if we can standardize that in a more uniform terminology, I, while it might be a rocky transition for some of us who are familiar with the old terms and now have the transition to something new, the idea is that in the future, it will be far less confusing. Um, of course, documentation is a big part of this. You know, having workshops is a big part of this. Educating folks on these changes, and, and then writing the documentation such that it reflects all the changes. Um, but you know, that's kind of this transition period between six point three and six point four. Yeah, and, uh, and Brian did, has yeah. it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Uh, I was going to say we did have one smaller question earlier about uh, where the uh, the sync status is actually saved and is um, it's saved as a, in case you didn't know this, Nick, because I had to look it up myself, is uh, saved as post meta. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. just quickly answering that in case others had uh, that question too. Yeah, so you can see it here. When you come in here, you can see that you can't change it on the block level yet. Um, but see, you can see a sync status, not sync. Now, I thought I'd been thinking about why you can't change it. 
I don't know if you have a better, because uh, this question was asked of me. Okay, now that we can manage patterns, how could I take a pattern and that's synced and turn it not synced or you know vice versa? And especially with if it's a pattern that starts synced and you unsync it, I think that there's, you might have inception like because it's unsynced in some places and it's not synced in others. So I don't have a good answer for it. I just think it from a technical perspective, it's quite challenging. That's why you can't, unsync or sync an existing pattern. So if you wanted to take this pattern and make a synced version of it, you would need to copy the block, copy the code and, and go from there. Um, and note that you can create a reusable or a pattern from within another pattern. So if you wanted to take this and save it as a synced block, a synced pattern, you could. Now there's one thing that I want to oh wait, let's see here we have. Yes, a PR equals a pull request. Okay, I'm using the 2023 theme. How do I find patterns? It doesn't look like the screen, uh, same on your screen. Okay, so uh, you need to be running uh, Gutenberg. So if you have, if you're running 2023 and you have the Gutenberg plugin installed and up to date, when you go to editor, you'll see this patterns option option here. And then you should be able to find it. Now, there's one thing that I wanted to cover, which doesn't really seem related uh, to reusable blocks uh, and this pattern disc the renaming discussion. It's more about design and composing with blocks. This is a personal opinion, but now that reusable blocks and synced or synced patterns are becoming or kind of like one of the banner changes in 6.3, and we're starting to discuss sync partially synced patterns. I wanted to discuss some pitfalls that you might run into if you're reusing reusable blocks and how you can overcome those pitfalls uh, when you're building out sites. So there is a technical limitation to synced patterns or reusable blocks. This limitation has existed since reusable blocks were first introduced into WordPress. So if we come over to this page, I have some designs and we come down to this university news query loop design. This is a fixed design. It's not something that you would wanna change often, but imagine you wanna have this section on multiple pages of your website. Notice here that this, let's look at the list view here. We can see that this is a columns block Inside of each column is two query loops. I'm not gonna get super deep into how this was built. Basically you have one query loop that's just showing the latest post and then the other query loop that's offset by one and then showing four more. Notice here that this columns block is set to a line wide, okay? Now, if this was a block pattern, a traditional block pattern, an unsynced pattern, there's no problem here. What I come here is I come to my columns and I'm going to save this. It's going to be unsynced and we're going to call it uh, University News. I'm just putting, you don't need to put this here. I'm just putting this here because I'm going to name it the same thing twice and I don't, I don't want to mix it up. So we're going to create this. Okay, so my unsynced pattern was created. Now I can come down here. I can add a paragraph and I can say, uh, sorry, you can't do that with an normal pattern. We're gonna go to my patterns and we see that we have the university news unsynced. I'm gonna insert it. When I do insert it, you can see that the column is aligned wide. Everything works like you would expect. However, if you turn this into a synced pattern, you're gonna to start to see a problem. So let me delete this. Come back over here. And I wanna stress that this is not new. This has always been a problem with reusable blocks. It's just that now that synced patterns are gonna become more commonplace as people use them more and more, and especially as we move to partially synced patterns, you might run into this issue more frequently. So again, I have my columns. Come over here, we're gonna create a new pattern. We're gonna call this University News Synced. Turn on Synced. Now, when I click this, 
It's going to refresh and it's going to squish my content. The reason I don't, the reason that this happens is that the layout settings in in the block environment are applied to containers. And when you put a synced block inside, when you sorry, when you when you create a synced pattern, the editor has to wrap that in a container. Because if I put university news on the home page and I put university news on an internal page, and then I change that sync pattern, it needs to update. And there's a wrapper around that content in the editor, which fundamentally kind of breaks the layout settings, which is why we're seeing what we see here. Now there's an open PR for this, but it's a very challenging technical issue to solve uh, in a way that's stable and you know it, it, it makes sense. So if you're thinking about synced patterns or usable blocks, and especially as you're thinking ahead to partially synced patterns, this issue becomes a, a much bigger problem because when you're thinking about partially synced patterns, you can think about headers and footers where you don't want people messing with the design or you wanna be able to update the design yourself across like, imagine a header. You design, oh, we can go, let's just come over here and we can go look at header. So imagine this header, right? You want this header to be the same on every page. Now here we're using template parts. So this is, might be a bad example. But if I make a change the, the header to yellow or red or whatever, I want that content to be consistent across every partially synced pattern. But I also want people to maybe change a header on a different page, you know, maybe change the content on a certain uh, page template or whatever. So the content might change, but the design is the design is the same. But if I can't do a line wide or a line full, well then, you know, that doesn't really work for a header. I need, I need to have these alignment functionality for these big pieces of content. Or imagine this big banner image. Imagine that was a partially synced pattern where you're controlling the design and everything, but you're allowing people to make some changes to the content. This is where we start getting into problems because a lot of the concepts that we have around partially synced patterns, what they could be in 6.4, require these alignment settings. So in lieu of a technical solution to this, I wanted to come over a pretty simple and uh, good, in my opinion, solution to this problem where you can use sync patterns in a way that per persist the layout settings uh, for, the, for those designs. And the answer to it is we just need to think a little bit about how layout works within the editor and containers for it. So when you think about a reusable, piece of content or a synced pattern, this is content that could be anywhere. And because it could be anywhere, you don't necessarily know the layout that is being applied to it. Because we know that in a group block, for example, right now with this toggle, I'm inheriting the wide and full settings in my theme.json file. But I could set my own sizes here that would override. So if I did 400, you can see that I'm overriding the layout settings for this group. So when you have a reusable piece of content that can be put anywhere, you actually don't really know what layout settings are being applied to it. So when you have a reusable block synced pattern that uh, has alignment controls on the outside, and then you turn it into a synced pattern and they're lost like we see here, the way to fix that is to simply take our synced pattern, we put it into a group, and now you can see here that this group, because it's outside of our synced pattern, does have alignment control. So we can take this and make it wide, and then we disable layout inside of that group. So what we're doing is we're using the group as a container to set the, uh, set the width to wide, and then we're preventing the layout from that group from passing into our, our synced pattern. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you have a situation where you're using a synced pattern and you need it to be a, like width of a line wide or line full, the simple solution is in the place that you're putting that synced pattern, put it into a group, 
disable the layout control, and then use that container group to control whether it's wide, full, so on and so forth. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? Because I, I, in my mind, I explained it well, but I'm not sure that I did. Yes, just, adding, yeah, was, Sally's saying uh, add more containers. <laughs> yeah, I was just shaking my head the, when you were doing that. I was like, oh, Nick's got it right. I was like, that's the same solution I came up with. Uh, and we hadn't talked about this before uh, this session. So I was like, I, I think you're on the right path. Yeah, and it's tough, and I, and I get it. It's it's a lot of containerizing, that's a word. It's not. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that finding a solution for this is, is going to be tricky. I, I, I don't think anybody debates that if an easy technical solution could be found, uh, it would be implemented. Uh, we're just not there yet. So I wanted to share this. If folks are starting to use this functionality, running into this problem, it's a pretty reliable solution that works. It's never not worked for me. Um, and so I would take this approach if you need to use these align wide, align full, reusable content areas. All right, now, the only other thing that I wanted to talk about was the fact that, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, I think we talked about the, the patterns get saved let me just save this real quick. So the patterns get saved to into the into the database into and they're a post type called WP block. Right now, uh, I think I mentioned this. There's no way to easily write this these patterns to your theme. Um, however, before we could never even create patterns in the WordPress editor. So I think that by the time we get from 6.3 to 6.4, uh, we are kind of transitioning between phase two of Gutenberg and phase three of Gutenberg. Uh, phase three of Gutenberg uh, is called collaboration, but a big portion of it is around workflows. And part of that is editorial workflows, you know, like when you go to publish a post, are there publication checks, all that kind of stuff, but also workflows and how we edit web, our, our websites. Um, so a lot of improvements coming to the site editor and things like patterns here. So we can start to see that now where we have, we're able to create patterns. We're able to store them in this uh, pattern library that has all of our patterns. And we're starting, we're going to start to see many more improvements to this in terms of how we manage these different pieces of content. Probably all called patterns, right? Because they're all under the pattern section, you know, from template parts and, and theme patterns and, you know, synced patterns and eventually partially synced patterns. So this area of WordPress is going to be, this area of the interface is going to become far more robust as we move forward. And it's also going to, I know for, I'll speak for myself here. I generally don't create patterns. It's just because it's kind of hard. You got to design the block. You got to take it, you got to put it into a file, into your theme. If your theme's under version control, it's, like, it's just a, it's a, it's a co fairly complicated process. However, now that we can easily create patterns within the editor, it's quick and it's easy and I can delete them right later. I don't really use sync blocks, sync patterns very often, but I use, I would use normal, just standard patterns for maybe a notice, you know, maybe a, a piece of content that I just wanted to save. Um, so, how we start transitioning to this new workflow of being able to save content uh, in a much more dynamic way, I think is going to start to inform how the UI changes as well. So as you begin using this in 6.3, as testing this in 6.3, find all the problems. Or if you don't like a certain workflow or you think it should do something that it doesn't, um, I encourage you to, to let the community know, submit an issue. Um, because this is kind of where we're heading. We're heading towards a more unified experience, which hopefully will be a good thing. We'll have less terminology. Everything's kind of standardized under one thing called a pattern. Um, and it will really set the stage for it, phase three of Gutenberg and all the collaboration stuff and all the exciting things that are coming. So Anne's asking a question, and this is, I guess I didn't finish my thought totally. Um, you can't, the create block theme, plugin, at least to my knowledge right now, does not allow you to export the patterns into your theme pattern folder. 
Um, I fully expect by the time 6.3 comes out, someone will be working on that because it's such like a logical, like, of course that should work. Um, and so I, I expect that to come soon as well because the create block uh, plugin for those who have not used it, it's a really great, uh, let me see, I think I have it installed here. It's a really great plugin that allows you to take the changes that you make in, yeah, it's this one here. So it's a, it's a great, it, what, the whole idea behind the create block theme pack uh, plugin is it allows you to take changes you made in global styles, whether it's template parts, uh, you know, global styles, colors, and all that sort of stuff that are traditionally saved into the database. It takes all those and writes them to your theme files. And it also allows you to clone themes, create new themes, all that sort of stuff. So now that we have patterns, it should hopefully do the, allow you to pull the patterns out. Um, I want to make sure uh, we got to a question I think we missed earlier. Uh, can you change a pattern that was created as a sync pattern into an unsync pattern and vice versa or locked? You cannot. Um, so the workflow for that is let's come over here. So for example, if I had my university news synced, I could come in here and I could edit it. I could make changes to it and save it. But if I wanted to turn this into a unsynced pattern, what I would need to do is I need to take the columns and I could actually, I can actually do it from within the pattern, which is kind of interesting. Um, so I'm going to create this now and we'll do new unsynced. And we'll click create. And now when I come back here, I have my new query loop and it's not synced. So you can't take one and then unsync it or sync it, but you can basically copy the block markup and create a new pattern that is um, using that. So we can do the same thing here. Let's just do it real quick. So this is a unsynced pattern. And here I take the whole block markup go like that, make it synced. And turn that off like that, update. And now you can see, yeah, new synced. So it's a little bit of a kind of a back and forth workflow, but you're really not doing anything other than just taking the block markup and then creating a new block with the synced or unsynced status that you that you want. How do I clone a copy of pattern from one website to another? Uh, so if you're, I mean, honestly, the simple answer is I use all the time is just copy and paste. So if you have a pattern, um, so for let's, let's, let's imagine you have two sites both running 6.3 and you have this no, uh, new synced pattern that you wanna copy over. What I would do is I would make sure I'm selecting everything copy and this is going to copy the whole the whole thing and then i would come over to imagine this being a new site come over to my new site i'd add a new pattern and i would just use command v or control v and paste those block that block markup into into the pattern um that's a bit of a manual process um but that's the probably the way i would do it would you do it any differently justin um, that sounds like a, a fine way to do it. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think the other question, uh, well, it was just talking about cloning. Uh, I generally, for me to clone something, I just create a pattern in my theme and right, right. right um, right. yeah, unless it's just a one-off thing, I might just. I mean, it's just they're just blocks. You can copy and paste them and move them around, do whatever you want to with them, really. Yeah. So there's one question here that I wanted I want to make sure we hit is you know are we not able to version control patterns? Um, so if you have a theme, uh, if we well we'll just take a look here. If we have a theme that has patterns that are included, so for example, I have my university theme and we have there's a patterns folder, all these patterns. If this theme was in a GitHub repository somewhere and under version control. You can version control all of these patterns. 
However, for for like a website like that you were developing, um, if someone inserts a pattern that's in your theme folder, that pattern is just blocks and people can change it, whatever. You have no control over once the pattern gets inserted and the blocks are on the page, you have no control over it. Reusable blocks, you have complete control over it. Um, I'm not sure about a version control setup for this, um, but you have complete control because every time you change your reusable block, wherever they exist, it will also get updated. But your point gets to partially synced patterns, which again, are not in 6.3, hopefully will be coming in 6.4, where you have a pattern that you can change in your theme files or wherever, but the content so you can change that and update it, but the content is dynamic. So if someone inserts a notice block, the design, the layout, and everything can be updated, but the content remains fixed. Because imagine someone put a notice in a blog post, and you want to change the look and feel of that notice, you'd be able to do that, but whatever they wrote in the notice would may remain fixed. So that hopefully will be coming in 6.4. Another thing around version control, which again, this is part of the vision for phase three, there's no timeline on when this will be possible. But one of the visions for phase three is allowing, so revisions. So in the site editor or in anywhere in WordPress, there's revisions um, and revisions have gotten some improvement. So if you come over here to the uh, half circle, you can click on this here and you can see our revision history. And you can see that the revisions that have been made. So some work has been started on revisions in the, both the site editor and uh, throughout WordPress. There is some conversation around allowing some hooks and filters for people to allow uh, these revisions to go into version control and, and provide access for version control systems within revisions. So again, that's not anywhere, no, no timeline for that, but that is part of the the vision for phase three around improving workflows, improving how people uh, do different things with publishing content and managing content. So that hopefully will be coming at some point. But oh, actually, but why I, while, while I say that, um, I wanna direct people to, no, not themes. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, Sorry, sorry. I apologize for the scrolling here, folks. We have a lot of uh, developer notes that have been published. But Justin, do you happen to have a handy the link to Matthias's 6.3 posts? Um, which uh, remember I'm not the... exactly sure, sure which one we're okay. looking for. Let's see here. All right, well, I apologize. Links. Um, I know we got links to all the phase oh, three updates. Exactly, that's what I was looking for. Um, which one was it? Uh, there was like, like five or six of them, I think. Um, I found it, okay, so this, uh, here okay. we go. So this is the main post around Gutenberg phase three. In the past two oh. weeks, there are individual articles written about each section. So for example, if you want to learn more about um, post revisions interface, there's a post about the post revisions and the changes that are going to become hopefully coming. So this is a really good collection of posts to review as you look ahead to phase three. And part of that is the library, which we saw some of that today, being able to manage uh, different you know, patterns and, and that sort of thing. But there's also some possible improvement to blocks and whatnot. So I highly encourage you to check out this article and then the corresponding, in this bulleting, bulleted section, the corresponding articles for additional phase three stuff. Um, but a lot of cool things. Now we are, we are basically out of time. So I wanna to touch on a few things before we leave today. Um, the first thing being on Thursday of this week, there's going to be a live product demo. It's gonna be put on by Anne McCarthy and Rich Tabor. So I'm gonna put that in the notes here. So if you're you're not, um, not doing anything on Thursday, <laughs> I highly encourage you to attend this product demo. They are probably going to be covering some of what I talked about today, but also everything else that's coming in 6.3. 
So lots of cool stuff uh, beyond synced patterns uh, that are coming in 6.3. Also improvements to sticky stickiness, um, as we can see with the sticky header. So uh, a lot of cool things happening in 6.3. I highly encourage you to test it out. Again, the release candidate for first release candidate is going to be coming out tomorrow. And then I also wanted to plug uh, developer hours. So this is something that our developer relations team does every month. And Justin, uh, uh, Michael, and Ryan are going to be putting on an event in a week and a half, I guess. And so I have a link there for that, uh, which would be another fun one for more developer oriented around block styles. So if anybody has any last minute questions, I'm happy to take them. If not, thank you for listening to me babble about uh, reusable blocks and synced patterns. Um, one final point, if you're reusing reusable blocks now, nothing will change aside from a name change. Um, you're just gonna get more UI and you can now create normal patterns, unsynced patterns within the interface. So everything will still work, just a different name change. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording, but I'll stick around for a few more minutes if people have questions. Again, my name is Nick Diego, sponsor contributor at Automatic, joined by Justin Tadlock, another sponsor contributor at Automatic. Thank you so much for attending today, and I hope you attend future online workshops. Have a good day. Yeah, I just.